Are we ready? Um, call to order and the minutes should reflect that our entire commission is in uh, attendance today. And we have good news. We're back up to a full commission with the appointment of Tim Thomas. Tim's been around a long, long time, well-known historian, but uh, Tim, I know you're always doing different things. Why don't you highlight uh, your major projects and your background or whatever? Sure. So first, it's an honor to be here today and be a part of this uh, this committee. Um, yes, I grew up in Monterey. I actually am a fourth generation native of the Monterey Peninsula and uh, worked for the, you know, initially I worked for the Monterey Bay Aquarium when they first opened. And then I went to work for the Monterey Maritime Museum uh, when they went first moved down to the waterfront area. And I was there for almost 20 years and I act, did a lot of different things there, but I was main basically the historian curator for the Monterey Maritime Museum. And uh, I also uh, work currently, and have been on the board of directors of the Japanese American Citizens League, uh, had been for 10 years, and we have just, uh, right before the pandemic, had opened a brand new little heritage center that we worked for 10 years to get open, and then the pandemic hit, so we're going to have a grand reopening very soon, and we're, uh, uh, so I'm very excited about all that. And, and I periodically, although I'm kind of retired from all that, but I periodically will give walking tours of Canary Row and the Monterey Waterfront and that kind of thing. And I've written a couple of books about Monterey history too. <laughs> you give walks on Fisherman's Wharf and the Lower Presidio too, right? Correct. I give walks the lower, mostly of the, yeah, the, of those two I give most these days. And the wharf, but I do at least once a month. Well, glad you're on board. Thank you. Tremendous uh, uh, wealth of expertise. So the first item is our consent calendar approval of minutes. The minutes were sent out. Any questions or changes or comments? If not, can I hear a motion for to approve? I'll make a motion we approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And Tim, of course, you're abstaining, right? Right. Okay, next item is public comments. This is the time for any member of the public to speak on any item that is not on the agenda. So if you have an item on the agenda, hold, hold it until that comes up. Do we have any members of the public that would like to speak? And Francesca, you're checking the Zoom too? I am. And just to share the information that the City of Monterey seeks to continue to offer virtual methods for public participation in meetings. If you aren't joining us in person here in the council chamber, there are two ways to virtually participate in this meeting. You may join directly on Zoom Gov from your computer or mobile device, or you may call into the meeting. To join the meeting on Zoom Gov using your computer, smartphone, or telephone, use the link or phone number on the agenda at isearchmonterey.org. Since the meeting has started, you'll find the agenda under the recent tab. To join by telephone, dial toll free 833-568-8864, enter meeting ID 161-622-2299, followed by the pound sign, and if prompted to enter a participant ID, press pound. This meeting is also streamed live on the city's YouTube account, which is accessible at youtube.com forward slash city of Monterey with an approximate 10 second delay and on Comcast channel 25 with up to a 90 second delay. Detailed instructions on using Zoom are available at monterey.org forward slash public meetings. To make a public comment using Zoom, please virtually raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button found at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. If you dialed in by phone, raise your hand by pressing star nine. And we do ask that attendees in the council chamber keep their phones and devices muted to prevent audio interference and feedback with the hybrid meeting. And masks are required for all who attend in person regardless of vaccination status, except those who are younger than two years old or have a medical condition that prevents wearing a mask. As always, we look forward to receiving public comments. And there are no public comments here or online. Thank you. So the first item on our agenda is the activity report. Uh, Inga and Jordan, do you wanna give us a, a summary of that? Sure, so I'll just say a few things and then I'll turn it over to Jordan because um, the bulk of it is, is Jordan's work. 
Um, I did want to uh, mention the exciting news that I, I think all of you are aware of, which is that thanks to Bill Wachowski and Jordan and others, um, Tim helped as well, we were able to reopen uh, the Presidio of Monterey Museum this past weekend. And in your packet on packet page, um, packet page 12 and 13, there's an interview with uh, Jordan that the Army did about the reopening of the museum. Um, we've been focusing a lot on uh, the um, Christmas in the Adobes, and we're going to be asking everybody if you are available to volunteer some hours, but um, Jordan will go over that. And um, also we have a, a book floating around that we're asking people to sign um, for uh, somebody who is leaving our um, volunteer corps with the Pacific Biological Lab. But now I'll turn it over to Jordan. Take it away. All right, so as you can see, there's more in this report as usual because it is a two month report, uh, but I will go over the larger items um, and the more time consuming items that have been going on the last two months. So the first, um, as Inga mentioned, is Christmas in the Adobes. Uh, so in September, I started drafting a plan for how we will take part in Christmas in the Adobes. Uh, due to COVID, this is difficult as Christmas in the Adobe is our busiest night of the year where we could easily get 200 people an hour in Colton Hall. And, um, and so that is not obviously safe. And so with that, we have decided that for Christmas in the Adobe, it's gonna be different setup. We're gonna have people wait out front and do groups of like 10 or 15 people that they can come in for about five, 10 minutes. And while the people are waiting out front, um, we hope to have a table set up with hot cider and cookies as we usually do, because we don't want to have that inside the museum because that promotes taking off your mask and being exposed and ex exposed to other people. And so while people are waiting outside, whether hopefully the weather is nice this year. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, people have, have hot, hot cider while they're waiting, be able to have a cookie, and someone will have a, an interpreter out there, most likely me, talking about the history of the building, um, what they're going to see when they go inside. So when they go inside, they're not hit with all that information, then it takes longer to sit. So we could just get people in and out as much and as fast as possible and efficient. And so as Inga mentioned, we will be needing volunteers, and we have been fortunate in the past that the commission has helped out, and we would like to ask you again to, to help out um, with that. And so we will send an email out with information on that. And let's see, then going on. And then as Inga mentioned, um, Thanks to Bill Wachowski, Chair Wachowski's help. Um, he has uh, been our docent coordinator for the Presidio Monterey Museum. And um, he has been excellent at getting docents information that we can get them vaccination verified so that they can work at the, the museum safely. And so that, that opened up last weekend. And for the first weekend, we had about 70 visitors visit which is pretty nice getting into the winter months for a museum that is tucked away, not easily accessible or able to find. And so we're, we're extremely grateful to Bill and all the docents who have helped us get that ready and opened. And with getting the museum open, I also created a docent's guide for the, the docents. And so that is there so that every question that they may have, like they can go to that before having to come to us on limited staff time. And let's see. And so with, with the last month, the Presidio reopening in Christmas in the Adobe's has taken a majority of my time. Um, I spent about three days just cleaning, getting everything ready for the museum. Um, let's see. And so, yeah, again, we're just happy after 595 days to get that open. Next is 
I was excited to, on October 1st, I gave over 60 second graders from Monte Vista Elementary School a tour of Colton Hall. Uh, so we had three groups of 30, or no, 50, 15, um, just coming in every 15 minutes, just doing the history. And it was nice to have the first school group come back to the museum and have just it being alive again instead of just quiet during the week. And then, I mean, that's, that is the bulk of it. As, as Inga mentioned, I, I was interviewed by the, the Army um, for the reopening of the Presidio. And so they did a great job of getting that information out. And we hope that the, the soldiers will start to come down to the, the, the museum as well. We know that the Garrison Command is very happy that the museum is open again. And... That is about it. Okay, and are there any questions of anybody? Yeah, I'll ask. Yeah, I'll ask. Uh, first of all, thank you for doing all that work for You're welcome. Uh, Christmas <laughs> at the Adobe's and all and everything else. Um, is there gonna be music at Colton Hall for the Christmas? So we are working, the, the Fort Point Brass Band wants to come back and they always, they're always on Saturday and sit on the porch and play outside because I mean, they have big brass bands, so it would be really hard and loud to have them inside. So I, I think we are, I don't know if we have started the verification process for them as volunteers, but they, it sounds like that they are gonna come out for Saturday. Budget wise, I don't know if we have it to have like the usual performers that we would come on on the Friday night, but um, I can let Inga comment on that. We haven't looked into it, we just, mm -hmm focusing on just getting things up and running. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the the thing is that every volunteer needs to be verified and it sometimes takes a while for everybody to get uh, into the system successfully. So, yeah. but we hope so. And I think that because we're being so frugal in our other expenditures, we should be able to pay them as well. Just a, just a question, sure. Jordan, uh, on uh, what's your traffic flow going to look like? Everybody going in the front door and out the front door, or are you going to run them through the building? I think right now the plan is that we'll just, it'll be 15 people come in and we'll have um, two, inter we could technically even do 30 people because it'll be so open that we could have 15 people on one side, 15 people on the other side, and we could have two interpreters just talk about everything inside the building. Um, within that time, let them take a look at sales item and then just have them go out the back door. So it'll be one way in, one way out, except for ADA access. So everyone will come in through the front and then exit out the back just so that we can keep everything yeah. going. Okay, that, that's what I was concerned about. Any other questions from the commission? And I had one on the uh, packet page nine. You talked about the city's mission and vision statements and value drivers. Um, is that all been final and can the commission get a copy of all those? We'd like to see what the, all those statements are from the council. Yeah, so um, we had a two day retreat, uh, department heads with the council members uh, to, so that the council members could discuss the mission, vision and value drivers. They um, haven't done the final adoption because this was a workshop. And so uh, staff were sort of fine tuning the language and it will go um, before a council meeting. So I can let you all know when that's gonna be, I don't know when that's scheduled to go back to council, but um, I really pushed to make sure that we had history, historic, preservation, stewardship, all those good words in there somewhere because um, you know heritage tourism, I think is so important for our community and such an important part of who we are. So I'll make sure to share that with you. Are there any members of the public who would like to address the activity report? We do encourage members of the public to join our meeting via Zoom Gov. You will be connected live in real time to the meeting. If you are connected, please raise your Zoom hand or dial star nine if on the phone and there are no public comments. Okay. Going on to the next item, there's a public art proposal. We heard, I think this uh, last month, and then this is uh, more of a presentation. Is there any staff report, Inga? Uh, no, it's 
it's just that we welcome uh, Nancy to give us an update. We had, and Sherna, we had um, a, a presentation from them before. So now they're gonna bring it back to us with more information. Hi, Nancy. Thank you, I'm Nancy Selfridge and I'm a past member of this commission. And I wanna tell you, thank you for everything you do because you're very appreciated. Last year, we submitted a proposal to the Community Foundation for two sculptures. We did not get accepted, and we were told that we did not have enough community support. This year, we are going to go again and submit this proposal, but we are now asking for community support, and you are the first group that we have come to. Our main concept is to have five sculptures at the end that will be, four will be at where you come into Monterey, one as you come in off Highway 1 by MPC, the second one will be as you come in from the Carmel area on Munris, the third one will be on Del Monte around Window on the Bay, the fourth one will be as you come in from Pacific Grove, somewhere around the DLI area. And the fifth one will be a special one in Spanish Plaza. And that one will be different than the bears. Although we're for sure we'll have two of the bear sculptures alike, but the other two might be a little bit different. And we're very excited about this. We're asking the Community Foundation to do two sculptures for us. If we get the grant for that, then we'll come back the following year and ask for the other two and then the next year for the one at Spanish Plaza. So we have presented to you before, but we're very excited today because not only do I have a mock-up of the bear statue, but I have the sculptress. And this is Chris Swanson, who did the original bears out here in Colton mm -hmm. Hall, who has done our sculpture. This is what it will be looking like. It will be three and a half feet tall. And she has got two other ones. So we're not sure exactly which one will be chosen yet. They're all the same, but the patina is different. I also want to introduce Sherna <laughs> Stewart, who is my partner in all this. And we've been working very hard. We're redoing our proposal to make it current. We're also updating the budget. So we don't have a proposal yet, exactly what will be turned in, but what we gave you today uh, will be in the original proposal of the community need that public art is so well received and we need more of it here. Also, how many people, not only local, but people from out of town don't realize all of the history that's here in Monterey. They realize we have the aquarium, we have Fisherman's Wharf, we have Canary Row, but we have so much more. So these sculptures will help tell people about the history. Also on the big stand that they the bear sit on, we'll have a history quote of some kind. Okay. So we want to ask, see if you have any questions for us. And what we're asking for is a letter of support from this commission. To, so that we can turn it into the community foundation. Well, that was my question, Nancy. Is there gonna be some public, I mean, some uh, text there that will identify what this is and the significance of the bears and whatever? Um, they, the community foundation has a, a big list of things that we have to fill out. This was what we're for sure putting in to the proposal this year, these word, this wording. So that's why we gave you only this part right now. Okay. okay, I'm not sure. Is, is there gonna be wording by the statue about identifying the significance of the bears and Monterey's history or anything? Um, they don't ask for that in their in their proposal request. No, where, I'm asking But we for can that. put it in, sure. We can always put it in. Um, I, I just would mention that this is um, basically for people arriving uh, by car. Okay. So uh, it has to be something that's readable from a distance and conveys the message uh, very quickly. But even at Spanish Plaza and Window on the Bay, couldn't people 
if they're walking on the rec trail, they'll see the bears and walk over there and see it or whatever? Well, there probably will be more information in, we're in situations where there would be more interaction yeah. with, with the public. Yeah, if you would consider that, were there, were there's a possibility of pedestrians that there could be some historic context with the sculpture? Definitely. Yes, John. The, the first two that we're asking for is one as you come off Highway 1 by MPC, and the second one as you come uh, on Munra. So there is not too much foot traffic at those right. two places. I have a question to follow on with Bill. My, my experience traveling in foreign countries and going into cities when there's something that as you enter the city and there's nothing to tell you what that's about, it just raises a question. What do bears have to do with Monterey? I mean, it, I like the artwork and I think it's a good idea. I just want to close the loop so that, that we don't raise more questions than we answer. I'd love to answer that because as the sculptor of the original Colton Hall bears, uh, why is it on our bear? Why is it on our flag? Why are bears on our flag? It, they have a tremendous impact. They're a powerful impact on the daily life of both the native populations and the early settlers. They were thick throughout California. You could not travel in California without contending with as powerful a predator as we are. And so bears figured into every early journal from the vaqueros to the um, padres to the, uh, uh, and everybody that was here, the ranchers especially. And there's some fabulous stories in these journals. I recommend the California Grizzly by <clears throat> Lloyd Tevis. And uh, so they excerpt, excerpted uh, journals from, uh, from all these early vaqueros and letters. And it was just, they're just really amusing, some of them. And it's of course like there's- a great, a great place for a cell phone site. Yeah. On our cell phone tours, exactly. we, you know, we give like, I don't know, one or two minute summary, but then if you wanted to know everything about the history of bears in California and in Monterey, you, you know, you can listen to it for 15 minutes or whatever. Exactly. So and it's not the bear location. itself, but it's the interaction with every early settler in California yeah. and the original people. So that's what bears, that's why they're on their flag. Yeah. So. But my question is for someone not from California, a foreign visitor or somebody from the East Coast mm -hmm. who drives into Monterey and sees a bear. Well, every time they look at our flag, they see a bear. That's true, yes. But what's the connection? Well, I mean, you know what the connection is. Right. My point is if we could, in a short space of words, mm -hmm. transfer that understanding to the person looking at the bear as they drive into Monterey, it there might is, be useful. The invitation on the card for the first unveiling was uh, there's a very good synopsis of that. And I think that would <laughs> lend itself well to a plaque. So, Thank you. I wish I had it with me right now. Thank you. And I'm I think that's the answer. So, Can I ask a question? No, I'm, I'm Bob's first next. Okay. It, it seems to me, or I guess maybe this isn't a question, but it seems to me that what these, when you see these monuments, my understanding is you're trying to encourage people to be aware of the fact that there's history here. Is there a way that you can put something on the base so that that will connect them with the path of history? Because then you got them hooked. At least that's the way. In other words, it's there because you want them to do something. So let's help them do that. By pointing with the at the uh, path of history or some other beginning point to, to study the history, absolutely. Rather than just being a, a interesting, we piece haven't of art. got the wording that will go on this big stand yet purposely because as we go to these different groups, we're picking up different ideas. Uh, Tim and then Tim and then Mike. I just question uh, why did you guys pick the bears? I and mean, bears, as you said, are in, in California, but there are things that are specific to the Monterey area that could have been used, would, would, I think, be highly more effective. Um, people. We, um, we thought about both, people, but uh, every person, every group, every culture we thought about 
someone would say, well, why don't you have this group represented? Or why don't you have this group represented? Where well, the bears are non-political and they really represent the whole area. And everyone that came here was involved with the bear somehow. So then why not a sea otter or a sardine? Because sea otters, people think immediately of the aquarium or fisherman's wharf, we want you to think history. I guess as the, from the historian point of view, I don't, I don't, the bear, I don't, I get it, but I'm not sure what else would get it. <laughs> Our first thought for on the stand was welcome to history, but we're yeah. kind of regrouping that as we yeah. regroup this whole proposal. Hey, Mike, did you have a question? Well, I, I think some of the answer to this and to the material we're going to be looking at with re, regard to the path of history is we, we've got to get away from text and into, you know, something on people's phone that will get the message yeah. through. And, and that may be much easier to access than either trying to read something as they drive by or coming back and, you know, getting it at a later date. Um, but, but I think we, we really need to talk more about getting real uh, access to phone information uh, in an easy format. John? I'd just like to clarify it. I didn't mean that um, I was looking for any text now. I understand that you're going to the community foundation and you're talking to other groups. So when you finish that and you have what you've put together from all of those groups, then I think maybe we could talk text. We, we weren't, mm -hmm. I, I think the two of us were not advocating that it go in your proposal right now. Right, and yeah. we don't wanna to do too much until we actually get the grant. And then we will fine tune exactly where these will go and all the wording, okay. yes. And thank we you. will be coming back and forth. Yes, okay. thank you, Great. Nancy. Any other questions? I have a question, which is, what's the timeline for getting the proposal put together? The Community Foundation has not come out with when it will be next year, but it will probably be around July. Okay, because I'm wondering if, if the, I know we wanted the um, commission to take action, but I wonder if, since you're currently developing the proposal, um they might want to see it once it's further developed in order to provide a letter of support i think what nancy's saying inga is that they need community support for the general topic of the subject right now and again as john said the text could come text cell phone that could come back to us later but they need community support saying yes go ahead with this and develop it more later right that's correct yes, thank you. all right yeah, John. Maybe it's appropriate to make a motion that we- We should open up quickly to the, any other oh. members of the public would like to speak to this? Francesca, anybody? To make a public comment, please raise your hand using Zoom, or if you are connected by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. There are no comments at this time. In that case, I'll make a motion that we draft a letter of support. Okay, great. Is there a second? Second. Second by Bob. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Thank you, Sharna Thank you. and uh, Nancy. Thank you. All righty. Uh, next item. I think this is this next item is in response to John, your question several months ago about the visitor center. And I know I talked to the city manager, and the city manager said um, your uh, Inga will illuminate you on all the various <laughs> things that the staff is doing to get information out about our historic uh, items in the city. So, is that correct, Inga? You want to take it and go ahead with it? Sure. So this is about a program um, that the museum uh, works on every year where we get our brochure that is the cell phone tour and um, a brochure that lists all the historic sites um, and has a map. And these were from a grant that we received um, back in 2002 or so that was called Explore Monterey. 
and how do we push that out? Because there's concern now that the um, Welcome Center has closed, how are tourists gonna know about all our fabulous places? And so we uh, work with this um, vendor that that's their business is to put our brochures in um, places where visitors gather. And so I just wanted you all to know that we distribute about 20,000 with them, through them, brochures each year and um, the locations where you can find them. So for instance, there's a welcome center in Gilroy and a welcome center in Salinas. And then um, we can pick various regions where um, the brochures are placed. And right now we're doing the Monterey region. So that includes uh, a lot of different hotels. And also of course, uh, we have them at the airport. And so this just gives you a sense of what kind of push we have to visitors for brochures that describe our historic assets. I have a question. Yeah, John. So this is new. We're paying this um, distributor now where we didn't pay no. them. No, we've been doing this for a long time, but I don't know that you are aware of it. So, so when questions were raised about the visitor center closing, um, Hans was saying, well, what about the current distribution that you do to try to reach visitors through other visitor centers? And so that's why I prepared the report. We actually um, cut back uh, last year on the range of distribution because of budget reductions, um, but we've been doing this for since since the grant. I guess it was originally funded with the grant. Yeah. And if so, someone had a place where they could distribute these to the public, how would we go about getting some? I understand from Jordan. I think we have quite a supply. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Well, the, and I think I sent you some emails on my research on visitor center. Um, they, the visitor, there's the visitor convention bureau, right? And then there's the Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. Yes. So, and they were, they were in both buildings there for a while. Visitor center simply thought that the online had taken over so much that, and, um, and they had to pay their staff to, to do that. So they just didn't think it was worthwhile. My, my question to them then was, well, this is such a great site. Why was Pacific Grove so excited about their visitor center, which in my opinion is a pretty terrible site. I mean, to find it in the smack dab of the peninsula. But I talked to PG, you know, and their attendance has dropped quite a bit. So it's like the online has taken over. So that's the bad news. I don't think they're coming back. The good news is that right next door is the Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. They have racks filled with stuff. If people come there, I said, you really don't direct them up to Abergo and Webster where there's no parking, no sign. They say, no, we give them brochures here. And I'm gonna drop off some more brochures on the lower Presidio. So if there are any brochures that we have on Colton Hall or whatever, they, um, they can't be a full visitor center because they're a full chamber of commerce, but they will pass out information and give you know advice to people, which you know I think is very helpful um, to that degree. And I assume Jordan, if we go up to Colton Hall, if a visitor came to Colton Hall uh, this weekend, they would find that we have brochures there for the Presidio Museum and for and Ed Ricketts Lab, and for vice versa. If they go to if we go to the Presidio Museum this weekend. Does it tell you, you know, why don't you visit Colton Hall or here's how you can visit Ed Ricketts Lab? Correct, yeah, we, we have all of that information at the three of our locations. Colton Hall has more because it has more space. So we, we have state parks brochures, and then we'll also put flyers for local art shows or things like that as well in there to help promote the community. But the, the lab, the Presidio and Colton Hall have brochures for each location. Yeah. And you have the cell phone tour map? Correct, yeah. <laughs> So on your point, I mean, at the White House, you could drop it off at the Chamber of Commerce. They said they'd yeah. be glad. And another good resource is the library in the lobby of the library. Thank you. A lot of people go there for information. Thank you. All right. And we typically have them there. I think the map is really helpful because um, in the larger 
trifold explore monterey brochure um of course the the hours at the various facilities state parks facilities and so forth are open you know um are are subject to change but they have phone numbers there so you can call they have little brief descriptions the outside and i'm looking at packet page hmm uh, packet page 20 if you haven't seen this nice um page of the brochure all around the edge it has a timeline and it has all of our museums on it so it has path of history it's a uh, it's a really useful uh, brochure that packs a lot of information into it. Great. Any other questions of Inga or Jordan? Yes, Mike. Well, uh, I happened to start talking to this uh, to my son, you know, who's the next generation, and of course he's saying, "What? You know, this is all <laughs> hard copy. You know, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, this is nineteen whatever." Uh, Sooner or later, I think we we want to try to get our um, path of history onto, for example, Google Google Maps. I understand the rec tra trail is on Google Maps, but the path of history isn't. And in addition to Google Maps, there's a very nice, more advanced uh, history uh, site of Google where you can go and find out about a lot of uh, more depth of history of various areas. So, I mean, I think we, we, we need to start moving in that direction. More. So I, I think we are in that direction, Mike. If, if you go to any one of these cell phone tour sites and you join, um, you, list, you start listening to a recording by dialing the number, it sends you a text. And on that text, it gives you a link to the website, which is uh, cityofmonterey.oncell.org. And when you click on that website, there's an interactive map that shows you all of the different historic stops. It's and then it also gives you a slideshow. So you get more and you also- But if, you know, most people go to Google now, they don't, they don't know there's something called Oncell. So it, well, I've Googled it to find it. Move off, I think, of, of this very specialized piece. And uh, I don't know, my, my son volunteered to try to help move us in this direction if we want to try to do that. Sure. When I Google, when I Google Monterey walking tour, I get, I find this, I find this on cell tour. But there might be ways to tweak the Google search yeah. to make it come up as the first result. That's good. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, Francesca, can you check with the public? Yes, to make a public comment, please raise your Zoom hand, or if you are connected by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. There are no public comments at this time. Alrighty. And on to agenda item number five, our strategic plan. Inga? Sure. So our strategic plan committee uh, met uh, on the second and took a look at our strategic plan and um, made some recommendations on how to update it. And then uh, uh, Bob Evans wasn't able to join that meeting. So I should say who's on the committee. So it's John Castagna, John O'Neill and Bob Evans. And then um, Bob wasn't able to join us for the meeting but he made some comments afterwards. So, so the just kind of the big broad idea is that to change the dates uh, by moving them a year forward. And um, so on packet page 31 is where the strategic plan begins. And the one, two, three, four, fifth column over due date, just change all those dates um, moving forward. And then we can remove the stables, which is at the bottom of that page because the stables did come down. And then um, those are the, the main changes. And then uh, Bob had some 
additional changes that he suggested, and, and maybe he wants to just uh, talk us through them. But I have uh, sent you by email sort of a revision. I guess we could bring this back after this discussion, we could bring this back to the December meeting and sort of ad adopt the revisions to the plan. Well, there were the, I, let's see if I, I don't have them in front of me, but let's see if I still have them in my head. Okay. First one had to do with the arts programs. It looked to me like 2022 is going to be a dead zone. And it seems to me that that's a shame. Uh, we ought to be able to do music maybe, uh, maybe in the spring when we have done music in the past. Uh, hopefully COVID won't be quite as bad and, uh, or maybe it'll go away. Uh, that was one. Um, the, let's see, the next one had to do with the stables. Um, yes, we've completed taking down the stables, but we have a plan for replacing them. So it seemed to me we need to change that goal to some stage of the process we'll have to go through in order to get the money to get the stables replaced. And just to update you on that, Old Monterey Foundation submitted a plan to the city about the replacement of the stables, which will eventually come to this commission. Uh, Han said, go meet with the army. We met with the army and the army said, we have bigger issues to deal with is the sloughing off of the, mm -hmm. the wall along Lighthouse Curve. Mm -hmm. They want a, a large, large retaining wall set up there. So they said, we're not gonna review anything until that becomes resolved. And so the army suggested that there be a meeting between the city, the army and Old Monterey Foundation. But right now they are very, very concerned about um, the remnant that's such an archaeological site that they go, they fall down onto the walkway, and then from the walkway they go onto the road. Mm -hmm. So that's a big issue right now. And I don't think anything's going to happen physically on the Presidio until that's resolved, one way or the other. But so should we have something as part of our strategic plan to monitor that process? Yeah. I mean, Otherwise, it's going to go away, and I agree nobody. With you. I mean, monitor and replace the stables. That's a long. I'm just saying that's. Um, yeah, it's longer than. Yeah. And more complicated. Right. Yeah. We should put that on there. Yeah. So yeah. I would say uh, work with army and city to resolve issues regarding the um, whatever you call it, the slumping of the or the retaining wall. Yeah. Yeah. And well, this is that, I mean, I think Bob said a good comment on the music. Is it likely or is, what's the likelihood of us returning to music at Colton Hall uh, next spring, Inga? Well, the challenge for us is that we can't predict what's happening with COVID-19. And when you plan a music series, you need to line up a series of musicians. And with our last music series, we had lined people up and we had to cancel events. So I would recommend this fiscal year not proceeding. We haven't raised the money for the concert series. I would just recommend, you know, the fiscal year ends in June. And unfortunately, we, unless some great opportunity comes along and we see that we're able to gather people together again in Colton Hall, we not do a music series. I think if, if the mask requirement is still in effect, then uh, it's going to be very difficult to have a concert there. It's just yeah. not big enough to distance people. Yeah. And the musicians, you know, how do they play wind instruments when they have to wear masks? And also the performers have to have all the various vaccination uh, verification that the city requires. The, the wind players uh, just take their masks off when they yeah. play. I've been to yeah. some concerts. And they okay. Yeah, and the symphony puts plastic panels around them and that sort of thing. Um, Jordan had his hand up. Um, I just also wanted to add a lot goes into these concerts, and there's no way I can do this <laughs> right now. <laughs> and so that's something else that we'd have to look into. We just we don't have staff. And right. 
And that brings me to my fourth comment. And that is, I think we need to have a goal of increasing the staff in the, mu in the museums and cultural arts division uh, to have Jordan who is part-time and a leader of, the, of this department as well as of the library seems to me to be um, an overload for that individual. Uh, the library would seem to me to be a full-time uh, job. And that means there, we, we aren't gonna get the attention that I think this division needs if this city is really interested in, in cultural arts and history. Um, so Jordan, you're at 20 hours a week now. And that's the only staffing the museum has, right? Well, we also pay the folks that work in Colton Hall. Right. I mean, and no we also have we also have um, a 0.25 of an admin assistant, which is Francesca's position. But of course, the budget you're having a budget come up this spring, right? So I correct. Think maybe during that timing, maybe that you could bring it back to us, and we would look and support and ask the council to support more staff at that time during the budget proceedings. Exactly. That would be the idea, the plan. Yeah, I just want, I just think it has to be on the agenda someplace, whether it's a strategic plan or a more, something maybe even more important. Um, you know, the city had a historian. We yeah. don't have a historian in this city. We had historians plus other staff. That's, we had Jim Conway, Dennett. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. And all that's gone away. And so, with the human power that we currently have, we just can't do, as Jordan was saying, we just can't do these things that we should be doing. Right, and that's because of the, you know, we all had this huge, terrible, painful budget reduction. And, and this first year wasn't a year when we were building back all of our programs again. We were just trying to barely stay afloat. So that is part of the plan in, the budgeting is to look and see how stable the city's budget is and how much uh, room there is to uh, push for additional positions. But while we're so understaffed, that was another concern Jordan had about bringing back the, um, the gallery shows. Even though we've got uh, selected artists and um, there's space in Alvarado Gallery, there's still a lot involved in organizing the shows and hanging the shows and the publicity for the shows and that sort of thing. So we have to be, yeah, very cognizant of Jordan's limited capacity, my limited capacity and, and Francesca's as well. Any other comments by the subcommittee or other commissioners? No. Francesca? To make a public comment, please raise your Zoom hand, or if you are connected by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. There are no public comments at this time. Already, our last item are the subcommittees that work on the strategic plan. Yes. Gonna... So and work and work on other items as well. So as we all know from having recently done the Brown Act training, and as stated here in in this um, report. We're not supposed to have any standing committees as the Museums and Cultural Arts Commission. And so um, the idea is we, we've had these committees, um, we've had a, a committee for each museum, and then we've had a music committee, public art committee, and um, some other committees as well, a path of history committee and so forth. And the city likes the commissions to have ad hoc committees that last no longer than six months. So this is um, uh, <laughs> the first, uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. So the first thing would be the first thing would be that um, we should we want to uh, we want to starting you know now that we're in a new fiscal year effective July we want to sort of re form our committees 
And then if there is a committee that we don't actually need to um, appoint yet, we don't have to appoint it yet. Like, do we need a Colton Hall committee right now? We don't need to appoint it yet until we start doing Colton Hall work. That's the, the idea. And then for the Path of History in particular, um, I spoke with the, or emailed the Path of History members. One of the members was thinking of uh, stepping down because we have to rotate anyway. And then um, the uh, chair might want to appoint Tim uh, Thomas, Commissioner Thomas to the Path of History Committee. Uh, so because he's so knowledgeable about tours and history tours and so forth, it might be a good, a good place for him to start working. Someone might want to ask Tim about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we talked about it actually, and I actually worked with the with the woman that you guys had brought in, at least on the Pearl Street part of it, and I spent a lot of time with her, so I'm really familiar with it. So I'm happy to work on it. So who uh, who's on that committee? Or, or so Tim, you would like to be on that committee? Sure. Okay. So we have. Tim. Yeah. Inga, who else? Oh, John, and you would like to stay on one of you, or no? Path, Path of history. history. I'm willing to, but if somebody is more interested, okay. that's okay too. And John? Well, I just as soon rotate off, but I'm willing to if you need somebody. Yeah, okay. sort of. I'd be happy to go on to that one. Well, you would be happy. Because okay. it sounds like we're not going to have a music committee. <laughs> Do we have Bob well, and Tim? So we can only have three. And um, the previous commissioners were um, John Castagna, John O'Neill, and um, Chair Wachowski. So if if John Castagna goes off, then Tim could join. But maybe Bill, you want to rotate off um, or stay on? Uh, I think Bob, John said, uh, John O'Neill said, uh, if we need him, but Bob's more. Is that okay? Bob goes on, or would you like to stay on, John? With him? Oh no, that's fine. If Bob Bob has an interest in that, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So it still sounds like we got four. No. Yeah. Tim, Bob, and Bill. Are you on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is somebody else, uh, Kimberly, would you like to be on that one? That's okay. I'll let them. Mike? No. Thank you. So why don't we start with that and then we'll see, see where it goes. And then it's been, ta it's taken us over six months just to have a meeting. So uh, <laughs> we would dissolve our subcommittee and start all over again. <laughs> Tell that to the city attorney. Okay. <laughs> We can dissolve the San Xavier warehouse. <laughs> and I need to have the, the biological lab. I'm, it weren't for my leg. I still intend to meet with the general manager of the, of the Clement Hotel about that uh, access. And I think that's something that we can work on. You know, I'm like saying the Colton Hall, but if he gives us permission, maybe we can move ahead mm -hmm. with that handicap, uh, with ADA and all that. Yeah, right. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, uh, just uh, thought that my son, I think we can have non-commissioned members on the subcommittees, as I remember. Yeah, we've had that. And, and you know, if, if at some point you'd want to get somebody with more up-to-date uh, approach to like the Google, et cetera, uh, my son would be willing, uh, but th that's not necessary right at this moment. Okay. Bill? Yeah, John. I seem to remember that when that hotel was built, that they were required to provide that access they around are. the building. So, so this is taking it a step further. Yeah. So they're required to give us a pedestrian easement, but now we're saying this is going to be so, so minor. <laughs> but would you mind if we have the elevator come up and they come in and off there? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure he would agree to it. Yeah, it's not yeah. going to be on his property except when the gate opens. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it is. We do have to go to him because yes. right now it's a pedestrian easement that doesn't cross that property line. But why don't we keep that one? And um, okay. And uh, who's uh, John, and Anya, Kimberly, and I'm I'm willing to go off that if somebody else wants to be on that one. I think we want you to talk to the owner of the of the Clement, right? Well, yeah, I know. I'll talk to him. I'll I'll stay stay well. Yeah, I'll stay on it. Okay. And I'll Kimberly. stay. I'd like to stay. Okay. Jim, okay. comment. I was just saying, I, I know John Turner really well, the manager okay. of the hotel. I've done, I used to work a lot with him. 
when they're setting up the hotel, I help them with the history yeah. part of it. All, all the employees wear those little buttons. Yeah. Those came from me. Oh, so. Great. Another thought on that is the gate doesn't even have to open over. No, 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 it's there. Slide. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Good point. Already, uh, I think that we should probably um, appoint a um, public art committee just because we have, you know, public art um, things that pop up. So for the next six months, maybe we could have a, a group of people that are ready to talk art if we need them. And Kathleen was on that committee. So Bob and Kimberly. Anybody uh, else would like to be on that to replace Kathleen? Well, John. I, I hate to use the word, I'll volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have John Cassania replacing Kathleen Wall. Okay. Any other ones? Uh... Can we just go down the list because we're reconstituting some and we're not talking about the others. Are yeah, they I guess going away? Yeah, which what? ones are, um, why don't we, that's a good point, John. Why don't we go down and see which ones are active and then, mm -hmm. and then the, the new members. So. Colton Hall, you're saying that's not very active right now. Correct. The lab will be active because we can work on the ADA. And that right now is um, just John me. Cassania, Kimberly, and myself. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. is Mike or Tim, do you want to be on that one too or no? What is that? The biological lab. No, yeah, sure. I'd be willing to go off if Tim wants to take it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Tim. Mike, you okay? Or you want to be yeah. on that? No, that'd be fine. You want to be on it? Okay. Oh, we can only have three, so. I know, we got three. We got three. Uh, I'll step off it. So we got Mike, Tim, and John Castagna. All right. And I'll do that one little blurb and do that. So the lower historic park, um, I think that's going to be pretty much inactive <laughs> until we get that retaining wall result. But we should probably meet. Uh... Oh, you were saying that it's actually the old Monterey Foundation and the city and the army that are going to meet? It's in uh, Hans Court right now. I mean, I think we can have a commissioner, um, you know, somebody else, uh, John or Mike, attend that meeting too. You know, you can put yeah. it Hans. So, right now, the committee, do we want to change that committee then? No, it would be the same committee. I'm just saying it's fairly inactive. Yeah. There's just the one item, and that, that's going to take a long, long time to resolve. Well, you want to disbanding that? No, not disbanding. Just saying it, it's inactive. Yeah, but then, then it's a standing inactive committee. <laughs> <laughs> we should dissolve it until we need to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So I can play that's that the game. technicality, and yeah. I was going to ask you about that. It's <laughs> it's nice to say that the city code and the Brown Act says you can't have a ad hoc committee for more than six months. Are they purposely trying to get us to do nothing? <laughs> no. <laughs> do something. <laughs> months, you know. Right. Sometimes you can't even schedule a meeting in six months. <laughs> so it would just seem to me we ought to ask somebody if we're going to have ad hoc committees, they probably should be on an annual basis because we change commissioners on an annual basis sometimes. But just having them every six months is just a paper drill, and we're going to have to double the amount of time that Francesca spends sending out papers. And that's all I have to say on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> well, given that, uh, so we, we have a biological lab subcommittee, that's an ad hoc committee. Um, and then going down the list, the next one would be the public art, right? Yeah. We have public art. And is that it? Just those two then? The museum, I mean, the music commission committee. That's all. It, it went away. Yeah. For now, yes. So we only have those two then, Inga? And then we don't need a reopening plan committee because we've reopened. And the warehouse committee can go away. Yep. Yeah. There was digital interpretation. Well, and then, mm -hmm. of course, we have the path of history. Path of history. So we have three, yeah. right? Yep, and then down at the bottom of that page, the Digital Interpretation Committee. Oh, so nothing's happening there. We don't have any money. 
Nope. So we'll dissolve it for now. And a strategic plan committee. Yeah, which we can dissolve after uh, next month. Okay. Oh, our next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the question of being a liaison. And that was another question that Bob had uh, raised is uh, he, well, I don't think, I don't think historic Monterey has been meeting regularly. They have or have not? They have not, yeah. but there is the history round table which is a meeting virtually, which I don't know. Um, but yeah, Historic Monterey has not because of COVID. So we don't need any liaison, is that the- upshot? I think at this point, yeah, we don't need liaison. Okay. All righty, is that it, Inga? Yes. Well, if we're gonna keep that, uh, community outreach, Kathleen is no longer able to do that for history and art. For um, a museum, museum of, art. of art. So we just decided to do away with liaison stuff, right? Oh, did we? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. I uh, doubt that any member of the public would like to talk about this, but uh, <laughs> Francesca, you could ask them anyway. Thank you. To make a public comment, please raise your hand using Zoom, or if you are connected by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. There are no public comments. All righty. So you know, you'll send out that list and maybe, so we'll have a, a list of active ad hoc committees and then sort of inactive ones. You know, we got to keep track of that just in case, you know, whenever music comes back, whatever, then we, we would know who was on that committee. But for now, yes. it's inactive to satisfy the city's legal constraints. All righty. Yeah. It's the final item on the agenda. How about commissioner comments? Uh, starting from the left, Mike. No comment. Tim, do you have any items? I don't, but thanks for having me here. Oh, no, you're welcome. John? I'm impressed by the amount of work that gets done by staff with so few hours. I really am. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Kimberly, do you have any? Um, only that I just was thinking that there's still a letter to be written for the in support of the art thing. So right. if if there's a need for um, proofreading or any additions to that, I'm available. So okay, whoever is in charge of that, yeah. just let me know. I have a, just a, a question that I uh, didn't know what to ask. i um, been spending a little time down at El Estero. Uh, those uh, short monolithic hunks of marble yeah. that are sitting there. Um, when I've been down there, I've been looking for a plaque. And there's, as far as I can say, there's no plaque. And I vaguely remember, I think, there's being somehow connected with a sister city or something? No, no. Um, my understanding is uh, John Dunn told me that, that was to show, and there should be a plaque. That shows sea yeah. level elevation. Oh. As you walk around there. It's amazing how the old council members used to go there and have their happy hour with martinis at each one. But uh, no, that shows the sea level. Okay. But that would be, there is no sign there at all, Inga, right? No. I, Not that I know of. It should I, be. I mean, they're about a sign, and that's about one of the few pieces of art that we have in the city where there's no identification of when it went up and who did it or whatever. That's the largest piece yeah. of art. <laughs> so no hurry, but at some time, and I'll be glad. Uh, I'll be glad to work or whomever you can give me some research on it. Um, it, should, it would be nice to find out more about the history of that. Yeah, I tried to look it up. Yeah, I tried to Google it and so forth, but I didn't come up with anything. So. I, I can look into it, but I thought it was the De Anza Trail is what that was supposed to be, but um, I'll look into it. Oh, great, thanks. Bob, do you have anything? Well, speaking of El Estero in that area, whatever happened to the idea of refloating the swan? It, it's, it's up. They did. It is up? They did, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, 
yeah, periodically the uh, fountain works, which I don't know why they need a fountain. But yeah, it's uh, okay. Good. It's okay. Well, aeration increasing the oxygen level in the. Well, they do that anyway. I asked. Uh, I remember. Uh, um, well, anyway, uh, they they have aeration coming up, bubbling up. Yeah. Because I asked somebody about that, Doug Stafford. Yeah, yeah. And he said that uh, that's so that the fountain is really unnecessary. I had two quick items from the old Monterey Foundation. One is that we were going to have a big concert at Colton Hall the first Sunday in October, but because of COVID that was canceled, we're going to combine it with a free concert on New Year's Eve at the State Theater and combine it with the, the 250th <laughs> anniversary. We thought it's the last day of 2021. We better do it before <laughs> people forget that the 250th. So at six o'clock, and we'll we'll be sending out information on it. It's going to be free. They're going to be selling paraphernalia in the lobby about the 250th. I understand you have a very good orchestra too. Oh yes, <laughs> the Monterey County Pops. Monterey County Pops. Yeah, yeah. they were scheduled to do it here in October. And now they're going to do it on New Year's Eve. <clears throat> and second, I saw an interesting show. Um, on Ollie. Anybody ever watch Ollie through the CSUMB? It's like a form of gen train or whatever. But they had one yeah. yesterday. This woman, very passionate woman, kind of reminded me of the woman who did the path of history, but she did one on all the murals in Monterey County. 500 of them. Yeah. I was hoping to get hold of her. I got her contact. Is and I wondered if if she has a breakdown of every mural done in the city of Monterey. And if so, would she like to give a presentation to us on that? That's another Old Monterey Foundation. <laughs> we're turning away a little bit from the Presidio because we're caught between the Army and the city. And so we'd like to put some more murals up. I know with Inga's help, she would like to have us one put one behind the, the back of the library. And we're talking about the McCone Center at MIIS. So our goal is to get more murals, particularly historic ones in the downtown area. So, so my question. My Monterey question, JCL is putting one in. I'm sorry? Monterey JCL is putting a mural in starting next month. Monterey? Japanese American citizens. Oh, in. great. So is there any interest if, if she has like a slideshow on Monterey murals for her to give a little presentation? Yeah, that'd be great. Definitely, Definitely yeah. And for the 250th, we're going to put a mural along oh, yeah. the Cali P on the, on the yeah. parking, the big blank parking structure. Was there ever a design for that? Yes, there, well, there were proposals. We never, oh, you the money it. went away, and so. The well, Monterey Foundation, Monterey Foundation may be able to get money for that. Yeah, there were, there were a number of proposals, and we actually selected one, so somewhere in the archives, all that stuff is there. Yeah, yeah I've seen, I've seen those uh, um, records, so I know we have them. Already. Oh, I have, yeah. I have an addendum to my comments. <laughs> And that is, uh, you're all aware that we're the, the uh, city is putting a pitch in for Pat Hathaway's collection. Yeah. Apparently, we're in, we're quoted as being in favor of it, our commission. So I thought it'd be interesting to yeah. let you know. <laughs> so, so uh, John, I have I have shared that at the commission meeting before, and and I thought that everybody was supportive of it. I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember, but I'm supportive. I think yeah. it's under discussion. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Does, hey, you have any feelings about how that's going, Anga? Uh, so the the family uh, attorney and the um, the executor's attorney were meeting today to discuss the two proposals that they've received, and they haven't um, received word on how that went. So it might be that the next step will be a meeting and answering questions, but I don't know. They wanted to make a determination before the end of the calendar year because they want to relocate the collection. So, but we don't know yet. We, we were told we're a strong contender. Good. I have a question on that. Is, sure. that, uh, is that collection just going to be for the library then, or is it between both museums and library? It's um, because we're one department, the idea would be that it would be a library and museums collection, but it would be housed at the library and uh, initially, and 
I didn't want to overburden your time with it, but the idea would be it's part of what makes us the Library and Museums Collection. Well, it, I assume it would be a part of the California History Room. Yeah. That's right. Right. Okay. Alrighty. Any other bit of the order? I have, I have one little tiny one for, I, well, I don't know who it's for, but there's a cursor in our display right in the middle of uh, Inga's face most of the time. Kimberly kept trying to uh, No, no, I was trying to rub off of, there was a smudge. <laughs> sure, sure. So whoever, <laughs> it's gone. Roberta <laughs> pulled that in. Alrighty, we're all adjourned. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gotta tap the gavel. I, I know you weren't trying to rip the <laughs>